it's basically it just needs to be meaningful yeah. um it has to have an important intent behind just giving someone an exercise but also avoid you know and i've, I've just been guilty of this is not realizing that a, a certain situation may create anxiety for someone I, I feel like it's a good exercise but maybe something happened to that person that makes them have anxiety to be in that situation whether it's sitting in a corner or you know going into a room by by yourself but it the exercises have to be meaningful specific to the patient important to the patient and on an added note just be aware of how an environment may trigger some responses with your patients and Kendall said yes yeah, sports related so yeah bringing it bringing it to the sport that they're doing bring it to the activity that they're doing absolutely and Tim asked if this is the climb article in the speech journal and yes. I didn't know it came from the speech journal but the climb article on neuroplasticity is amazing and it's also um, it's spoken about in the um, big O'Sullivan book that is most of our Bibles yep. as well <laughs> Yes. So. And as, as Kendall said um, to Amy, Amy Alexander is a physical therapist at Banner Sports Medicine and Concussion Center in, in Phoenix. And they've been collecting a lot of data with athletes, um, MMA fighters, uh, the ba baseball players, and they're finding that their VOR they're successful at VOR at speeds like a 300 degrees per second. So we've not, we don't really have age appropriate or context specific VOR. And that's why I think there's so much for us to learn. But in the meantime, you've y'all been doing this as therapists where you find a particular speed that exacerbates your patient's symptoms. Does technology give us that specific information? Yes. It does, but that, that technology, we know it's expensive. Um, we know we really can't bill for it. So there's some limitations there, but that the more objective data we can get from that, from technology, the more we'll be able to customize therapy um, by using a metronome. And I do like the reference of beats per minute because we have to all also take into consideration the size or the amplitude of the head movement. So the demands we're putting on the VOR in short and fast is different than big. So amplitude of head movement is part of that equation when we set a metronome. So what I'll do is I think having access to Dr. Barine's lecture that, that, is, that I did with him because he's a VOR expert is make that available for everyone because he talks about the importance of considering head movement and he's actually has a chart that you can predict what the beats per minute should be when you're trying to obtain a certain demand or intensity based on the size of the head movement. Cause it varies between 20 degrees and 30 degrees. Yeah, that was really interesting. 